Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While they're putting the slide up, I'd like to read um, second. Right. You're gonna come up. All right, let me read uh, from Matthew chapter five, verses thirteen to sixteen. Familiar passage. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt lost the savor, where would shall be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, uh, but a given light unto all them that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let's pray for a second. Father God, we thank you for this time you've given us. Thank you for allowing us to be able to read your word. Help us be able to glorify your name with the strength that you give us. And help us to apply these words that you plan on giving us in our lives, dear Lord. Thank you for what you want to do. Please, please be uh, evident in our lives, dear Father, and also take over this meeting. Take over the message. Take over everything that's going to happen today. Help it be all done according to your will and according, for, according to your plan. And let it be for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Since it's Christmas time... Um, let me ask, what was the name of the angel who sang on Christmas Day? Anybody remember? Anybody know the angel's name who sang on Christmas Day? What? Gabriel? Is that what you said? Okay. Harold. You know Harold? You know nobody Harold? Hark the Herald, the Angel. Remember? You know that song? All right. Ta da! Where's my drummer? Okay. Uh, slide two. Uh, we read that already. Uh, can you help control the slides? Slide three. All right. We're in a political time, are we? See a lot of stuff about politics going on. Everybody wants to, to be on their side. They have a lot of parties, you know, Democrats, uh, Republicans, Independents, all kinds of people, all kinds of parties. They all have their own agendas. Uh, they try to persuade voters to their sides, right? They try to say this and that. They try to even say things are wrong about the other side so you can say that this party is the greatest. I think somebody mentioned earlier about I am, the, you know, Pastor James mentioned something about that when you're trying to promote yourself, right, in his message. You're always trying to gain the voters to your side because you want to be the victor. You're trying to say negative things about the other side because you, won't, you don't want them to vote for them. You're trying to persuade the voters, especially those undecided people. You see the undecided in the middle? Those undecided voters. Each group have an agenda. Each group have a plan. Each group have a target. Each group have their views, their values, everything that they're trying to believe in, and they want the other people to also believe in. They want to join their team. Bible says there are two kingdoms, gods and Satan's. You can see that up there too. Two different agendas, two different philosophies, two different plans, two different views, two different uh, things that they're believing in. They even have their own different books. Bible and Satanic Bible. And they clash. Nothing you will say will ever get them to agree on anything. They cannot be in a committee meeting and agree on anything if you get them two together. I'm sure they have. Both of them have committed members and looking for those undecided ones. Looking for the ones in between who have not decided yet. They want them to join. You are also trying to witness to gain those undecided ones to join our team because we believe that our, our party is the right one. Our party is the kingdom party, amen? One of those challenges of God's kingdom is there's a lot of undecided voters in our party, in our people. They want God, but they have not fully decided on that party. They want a little bit of this kingdom but they want to also have, or they also like the, how the other kingdom rolls. They want so they want a little bit of God, a little bit of church, and all the blessings. But they also like the other good and the benefits of going along with the worldly crowd and the, what Satan has to offer. 
Church is the same way. There's a lot of fully committed members in the church, even in our church. They want to come all the time. They come to church all the time. They come, into the, come to the meetings all the time. They're here in the morning. They come early. They take care of the church. They tie to the church. They come to all the com com committee meetings or whatever other positions that they may be in, whatever the pastor calls them. They're there all the time. They're fully heart, their heart is, their heart and soul is there for the church. And then there's others also who come to church on just maybe Sundays or just whenever things are, when they, when the name is called upon. And then they may not come in tithe all the time. They may, not, they may not provide the support that they need to provide all the time. But they're there. They're part of the church. They're part of the church body. They say they have, if you ask them which party you're part of, they're part of EAG. They're part of the church of God. But they also enjoy and play around in the worldly things. Next slide. One thing's for sure, the world is changing. They are unraveling. Lives are unraveling. What does God for God? What does God expect from us when it comes to the society that we live in? Sure, He wants us to come together, sing all the time, worship Him, read Psalms together, sing to Him, pray to Him, do all kinds of things. Come to fasting prayer. Come to Bible study. He wants us to do all these things. He wants us to be strong in the vertical, holding all these wonderful things. But He does not want us to forget about the horizontal impact. Amen. Matthew five, chapters five to seven. It says it talks about the Sermon of the Mount, on the Mount. Starting with the Beatitudes. After all the blessings in the Beatitudes and everything gets to verse 13 to 16. Where it tells them what you should do when you get outside the church. Verse 13. It says what? Ye are the salt of the earth. We are the salt of the earth. Turn to, uh, next slide. Thank you. Salt of the earth. Is perhaps salt is perhaps the most well known for its roles of flavoring agent and food preservatives. Salt has been used by humans to preserve food for thousands of years. But salt also plays other lesser known roles in the food we eat. Salt is an essential nutrient. It provides flavor, texture, enhances the color. Salt also can be uh, found in just about every food item. Salt. Amen? Salt. Verse 6. I mean, uh, slide 6. In verse 13 it says, this is not what it's saying. This is not what it's saying. That you are salt of the shaker. It says you are salt of the earth. Using simple analogy is what the Jesus is telling you here. What God is telling you that you, sh you and I should look outside the church. Right now we are in the shaker. We are in church. We're all hanging around with our brothers and sisters. Everybody's having a good time. We all agree together. We may all do worship. We may all do all kinds of clapping and singing and all kinds of things. And in, on the outside, we may all look like we're on one accord. We all have communion together and everything. Invisibly, like I said, we all look like we're on one accord. But when the benediction is over, when the final prayer is done, when the last goodbyes and shaking hands and all that stuff is done and we go outside, what happens when we leave the shaker and fall into the meat or into the world? Next slide. The earth will fare how salty we are, how salt the salt is. Salt in the shaker is no benefit for the meat. You get, you get, get what I'm saying? In the biblical and olden days, they had no refrigerators to freeze the food where it can last for a long time. Salt acts as a bacteria repellent that would come naturally to the meat or for the food. When we say that we are, when he says that we are salt of the earth, means that we have a Christian, we are Christian witnesses, we have an influence that others, that we will repel the culture or the worldly decay that happens when God is not present. If Christian loses their influence, Decay starts entering into the world or into entering into the culture. Sin creates decay. Polit politicians aren't the salt. Doctors aren't the salt. Teachers are not the salt. Medical people are not the salt. The doctors or the uh, nurses, they may not be the salt unless they are disciples of Christ. If we're all disciples of Christ, then we can all be part of the salt. You are the salt. 
based on how you and I live on the earth, decay is controlled on the earth. So we are living in a world where destruction is all around us while we, the salt, are in the shaker. Amen? Next slide. Second of all, salt creates thirst. Makes you thirsty. Imagine you are thirsty and you are in a body of salty water. You're thirsty. You're going to start drinking. Gives you more salt. Makes you more thirsty. You keep drinking and you're more thirsty and you're more salty. You're never going to get out of it. But each time...